All right, if you have been working with Edius for a little while now, you have probably from time to time noticed a problem, something like what we see here on our screen, what, where you have, uh, especially those clips that have a little motion in them, might end up displaying with kind of a double image effect, or what I call a ghosting effect. And you might be kind of scratching your head wondering what on earth is going on? Is this just the way Edius handles clips that have motion in it? Uh, can I really work with Edius? How can we solve this problem? Well, I first started noticing this problem uh, when I first started working with progressive footage. And so if you're just at the point where you're making a switch from primarily working with interlaced footage and, and you're working with these clips from maybe you've started shooting with a DSLR camera like I recently did and you're trying to put these on a, a timeline in a project and you're running into this kind of problem and you're wondering what on earth I, I thought progressive the whole idea behind progressive footage is that it's sharp and clear and every time you go to make a still shot of any frame it's going to be a crisp and clear still frame why are we seeing this ghosting effect what's happening here is that anytime you bring in uh, especially progressive footage that is a little bit different frame rate or was shot at a little bit different frame rate than what your project setting is when you started your project in Edius. This is the type of result that you're going to get. Edius tries to do kind of a frame blending approach to accommodate the difference and this is what it ends up looking like. So how do we solve this problem? Well first of all if you are working in a project where all of the footage is coming from the same camera that has been shot at the same frame rate, then what you need to do is make sure that when you start your project that you choose the correct frame rate. And then this type of problem will completely disappear. And this can be a little bit confusing and you can get tricked a little bit, especially if you're working uh, with Canon cameras. I'm not, I can't speak for Nikon. I don't shoot with Nikon or Sony cameras. I don't know what's going on with those. But in the Canon camera that I have, I have a Canon 6D and I have a 7D. When you go uh, and look at the menu settings and you choose which frame rate you're going to shoot at, the menu at the back of the camera says, well, it's, if you're in NTSC anyway, it says 30 or 24. Uh, and so you, you, know, you choose one of those and go with it. And based on that menu option at the back of my camera, when I went to go and choose my project settings and the frame rate in an EDIUS project, I just naturally went ahead with choosing 30p and threw my footage on the timeline and uh, expected beautiful results. Unfortunately, unbeknownst to me, <laughs> even though the menu setting at the back of the camera says 30 or 24, it's the Canon camera at least is not really shooting at 30p it's shooting at 29.97. Or if you choose 24 as your menu option, it's not really shooting at 24, it's really shooting at 23.98. Let's take a look, for example, I've got a couple shots here that's uh, just raw camera footage from my Canon DSLR. Let's do a uh, properties check on this. Here's footage that I shot at uh, what I thought was 30 progressive, but when I examine it closely, I see that it's actually a frame rate of 29.97. Here's some footage that I shot at 24, and uh, when we examine that footage in the properties, we see that it is not really 24p, it's 23.98. And if you bring this footage into a project that's 24, you're going to run into the same ghosting problem with that footage unless you have chosen the correct project settings. So let's notice what we can do to solve this problem. First of all, uh, let's take a look at this clip again and uh, maybe go kind of frame by frame through it and uh, so that uh, we're all on the same page and we're understanding the problem that I'm addressing here. Notice this double imaging here of the hand or if we uh, go a little forward and see this uh, guy in the motorbike and we go frame by frame, we're seeing this horrendous double imaging effect. And again, what the problem is, is we are working with footage that was shot at 29.97 and we've brought it into a project that is 30p. You wouldn't think that you would have that much of a problem 
uh, between a, a clip that is shot at 29.97 and a project setting in EDIUS of 30p, but this is what you can expect. If you do try and bring in footage that was shot at 29.97 into an EDIUS project of 30p. Now, just to show you that this is not a, a problem with EDIUS or a problem with Progressive or a problem with the Canon camera, let's close out of this project and uh, start a new EDIUS project. And this time, let's be sure that we choose the correct settings. And you can do that uh, even if you only have one uh, preset here. Uh, just hit check the Customize button before you uh, start your project and hit OK. And uh, before it actually opens a new project, it's going to uh, give you the opportunity to ch change and, and make sure that you've got the exact frame rate that you want. And you can do that by going to the video preset here. And from the drop down menu, make sure that you have uh, chosen the correct frame rate that matches the footage that you've shot. And in this case, we're looking for HD 1920 by 1080 at 29.97p. So with that selected, we'll notice that our frame rate over here changes to 29.97. We can hit OK. The project starts up. We can upload our footage, bring it into our play window, and uh, let's take a look at our car going by now. Let's stop it down frame by frame, and notice that the problem that we were seeing earlier has completely disappeared, simply because we have um, brought our footage into a project that has the correct settings. Let's uh, go a little forward here and notice that uh, the guy in the bike, again, has no problem. No ghosting, no double imaging. Let's uh, notice the same thing for our footage that was shot on our Canon camera using the 24. Let's open up uh, another project here in EDIUS. And this time, let's hit Customize again. And let's call it... Uh, 24 frame rate and uh, with our customized box checked let's hit OK and this time when we uh, uh, look at our drop down options notice that you have an option of HD 1920 by 1080 at 24 P and even though you might think that's the preset that you should choose based on the what your Canon menu says Actually, as we examined the footage carefully and noticed that it wasn't really shooting at 24p, it's shooting at 23.98p. And so that's the setting that we need to choose when we start our project. We notice that the frame rate is now set to 23.98. We hit OK. We go after our footage. And now, as we play our footage, we see that uh, it no longer has this ghosting effect that we saw earlier. You do still get a little bit of uh, motion blur, but it's not the ghosting effect that uh, we were noticing uh, when we didn't have the correct settings. Okay, well, the next question that uh, you're likely to have is, what if we have a one project where we're bringing in footage from different cameras where some of the footage is actually uh, shot at true 30 progressive and some is shot at 29.97 with the Canon camera. Uh, are we just going to have to live with the fact that some of it is going to have problems? No, what you can do is when you're working with uh, a project that has footage that has shot at different frame rates, the thing that you need to do is before you start working with the footage on the timeline is change the frame rate of the footage while it is still in the bin. Let's start another project and this time what we're going to do is actually keep the true 30 progressive as our uh, project setting and uh, then let's uh, bring in some of that footage that was shot at uh, 29.97. Now, 
the trick is before you uh, throw them onto the timeline and uh, let Edius try and convert them for you, what you want to do is simply change the frame rate right from within the bin itself. So for example, uh, what we mean is uh, just kind of spread out your bin there so that uh, you can see more options scroll across and if you don't see it available as an option just take your mouse up to the very top bar here and to do a right click and uh, choose an option called frame rate and make sure that's checked and uh, then it should show up there and then with all of your clips selected there just uh, point to the little drop down arrow there beside frame rate and when they're all selected, you'll be able to change them all in one swoop there. And simply change it to the frame rate of your project. And so in this case, we started a project that's 30p. So we'll select 30. And now all of our clips uh, are changed to 30 progressive. Even though they were shot in 29.97, if we change the frame rate here from inside the bin before we throw them on the timeline, that will solve our problem. Let's uh, go after uh, one of these clips. Uh, I think this is the one that we've been looking at. And here's the car going by again. And let's go frame by frame. And we'll notice that the problem has disappeared. And uh, remember, we did start this project at 30p. We brought in that footage, same footage, that 29.97. The only difference is that before we started working with it inside the project, the 30p project, we just simply changed the frame rate from within the bin. And now we no longer have the problem. And uh, this can be uh, a solution for any mismatched frame rates that you bring into a project. It's always better to change the frame rate from within the bin before you throw them onto the timeline of a project that has a different frame rate setting and uh, that should take care of all of your ghosting problems let's maybe even see what happens if we bring in our footage that was shot at uh, 23.98 and throw it into this project of 30p and uh, see what happens once again we'll notice that our frame rate shows up um, at 23.98 let's choose the little drop down arrow again and change this to match our project setting of 30p and now when we throw one of these into our project even though it was shot at 23.98 and you would expect there to be some real problems because we have changed the frame rate from within the bin we uh, no longer have that same ghosting problem that we were talking about. Now there's a lot of fast motion in this shot, so you do expect a little bit of motion blur just based on the shutter speed of the camera itself, but we're no longer seeing that double image or ghosting problem that you may have noticed in some of your projects as you've worked with footage that may not be matching your project setting. So there you have it how to avoid ghosting by getting your frame rate right.